But let's flip over to that conversation uh, about Tua. What was your biggest takeaway of what James of what he said or had to say about Tua and the high school player versus the college player we saw uh, this past season? I don't know, from uh, June Jones, probably his development, just, I guess, watching uh, from his perspective, watching to uh, uh, from when he was in Hawaii uh, before, I guess, well, even before his high school years to now. And then I think even uh, what you had mentioned about uh, just uh, that RPO style offense that we're seeing now kind of how well really it's kind of well probably the next level of the triple option that was in vogue uh really during bear bryant's days uh, up into uh barry switzer's uh i guess golden days with oklahoma in the 80s so kind of those two things really uh caught my ear yeah and you you have to think this, this is a scary part for me if alabama can figure out the rpo game with an elite passer because what you've seen is the majority of the people who really hone in on the RPOs don't have elite passers. They have good to average passers. And, and, and like, I think that's why Ole Miss was so good because Chad Kelly was above average passer. He's not, I don't think he's going to be on the level that a Tua is, but he was above average passer. And it made Ole Miss or allowed Ole Miss James be able to compete at the highest level week in and week out. So if you take that thought process and move it forward, it tells you that Alabama could really have something special. But here's something I took away from that. First of all, I, I thought it was interesting that he he texted before it happened that Tua would come in and win the game halfway through the third quarter. So I thought that was interesting. But to me, he said something there, James, that I want the Alabama fans to hear because – I think we've all kind of been guilty of it of, of because of how good Tua uh, and the potential he shows and how good he he we think he will be and how good he played and how well he played in the national championship game. We've said it doesn't matter in the spring. What the one thing I took away from June Jones is that Tua puts the work in and it's his repetition that 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 makes him great. He said that that one play that he scored the touchdown on, he said he had ran it a thousand times and he knew what to do. And so when we as Alabama fans say it doesn't matter uh, anything, it doesn't have any impact, well, he may be a better passer than Jalen, but he stays sharp. Why? Because of his work ethic and his dedication and his discipline. And that's why I believe it's important that he gets back out there and starts getting those reps as soon as he he can. Now, does he still have time? Absolutely. There's been guys who did even play in the spring come in and win the job. But it does matter if this young man practices because that's where he gets his comfort level from, not just his talent. June Jones seemed to make, from what I took, Jalen, I mean not Jalen, but Tua Tungvaloa is a quarterback that if he puts the work in, he, he, he goes out and he plays like a machine. He may not be – we don't know this. He may not be as comfortable if he doesn't get those reps, though. So you're saying then just con, kind of about to his profile that he's kind of one that, let's just say, uh, really gets into the film study as far as just his preparation because it kind of sounds like with that touchdown pass as far as just uh, – using those styles and repetitions or whatever it was that uh, certainly the willingness to prepare is uh, seemingly there for him. Yeah, it's, it's twofold. It's the willingness to prepare, which he can still do from a mental standpoint, James. But muscle memory, when you see guys, when you see Steph Curry pull up, you know, at half court <laughs> almost and knock a shot down, to you and I it looks like he's just throwing the ball up. But he's done that so many times that is natural. And so that's what I'm trying to communicate in terms of Tua. That's why he needs the repetition. Now, uh, does it does it change whether or not he'll win the job? No. But does it hurt Tua take off a little bit of edge? Yes. And that's why we want to see Tua get back out there full speed as soon as possible. I still am not sold that we're going to see Tua 
in the uh, spring game. I, we we may, but at this point, if I was a betting man, um, unless something changes in the next week or so, I don't know if they'll take a chance with him and put him back in in the spring game. So we'll, we'll of course, keep monitoring his hand and his recovery. A couple other things that came out from that uh, interview was uh, how impressive it is that Tua, as a young man, has been able to take the coaching because I never really thought about this. Everything that he's taught, he has to reverse and flip it in his head. So that that gave me even more respect for uh, Tua and his ability to have not been playing as much and not been getting as many reps and then to come in and do what he did. So so I give the, the young man a, another shout out and another kudos for his ability to come into the game and play at such a high level, having received coaching from a right-handed side uh, and then having to uh, revert that. I guess every left-hander has always done that, and we all know it, but you really hadn't thought about part of what helped me as a, a player and as a coach was seeing a guy do it the way I need to do it, learning from him, gleaning from him. But everything Tua sees, he actually sees it from the reverse of what he has to go out and execute. So once again, a special, special young man. And as we said, he was groomed uh, early and often from his family to the coaches to his high school game. And hopefully we will continue to see him develop as a player. Another thing that got me excited from that interview with Ryan Fowler of the, of the game with June Jones was him talking about Talia. Talia, first thought he said he's very similar, just not as fast. And he's a leader, he makes plays, and he's accurate. But the part that just absolutely blew my mind, and, and I don't want to put this much pressure on the young man, uh, but an NFL coach, this is not – to me, th- this statement is, is as big a statement or bigger. Last year, we got all excited when when um, Trent Dilfer made the statement that Tua had the arm of a sophomore Aaron Rodgers. We got excited about that. Did, did, did Ryan not pick up? Because I have not heard Ryan talk about Did you pick up what June Jones said about Talia's arm as a 15-year-old? He said his arm strength and his release was as good or better than some of the guys I had in the NFL. Did you miss that? I did not miss that, actually. I, I, I'm, like, I'm like, did he just say that the younger brother has the arm strength and the release of some of the guys – this was at 15. This was not this year's kid. And you know he's only getting better. I mean, think about that for a second. So this was Talia pre-Thompson High School. Yes, this was the 10th grade Talia. June Jones' assessment was as a 15-year-old, this kid had an had the arm strength and the release. Not He didn't say the superstars of the NFL, but as a 15-year-old, he had the release – and the arm strength of NFL caliber court guys who were on the roster of an NFL team. So let's just assume that uh, Talia comes to Alabama. Which bandwagon do I get on on that family? Hey, that's gonna. That's what I thought. So I said it's gonna be interesting to see uh, w- what happens with with Talia. Are people gonna start calling for uh, Talia? Of course. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go to that conversation. I'll hold, hold that off. But, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see if Talia ends up signing with Alabama. If this kid can live up to the hype uh, of that arm strength and release of NFL caliber quarterbacks. That That's big, big time. And Alabama's clearly the leader in the clubhouse for this young man's talents. A couple other things he talked about. Uh, something that I've been concerned about. He said it's not as big a deal in terms of the offensive line and defensive line because now right tackles are left tackles and left tackles are are right tackles. I agree with that if we got Jedrick Wills and Jonah Williams or Alex Leatherwood. I don't agree with that if Womack ends up being the right tackle. I think Alabama could be in some trouble. If I played against Alabama and Womack was a team, 
I spend that week with my pass rusher coming off of the right side of Alabama's offensive line. So I do think that matters. And then uh, also he talked about the quarterback competition being good for Jalen and the quarterback competition being good for Tua. For all of us who say that there was no competition, you hope there's a competition because you want Tua to continue to get better. We want Tua to continue to be pushed. We want Jalen to continue to be pushed. We want both of these guys getting better. We want Mac Jones fighting for an opportunity to get in there. And June Jones saying that he believes that it's good for both of those guys to have each other. And last but not least, June Jones saying that Jalen would be an NFL player. He didn't think he would be at an uh, at the quarterback position. But, hey, listen, I've never thought Jalen was going to be a quarterback at the NFL level, but that has nothing to do with his ability to play at Alabama. He doesn't have to be an NFL quarterback to be a good uh, and a great, even a great quarterback in college. Tim Tebow can show you that you can be an elite college quarterback and struggle to make an NFL team. So uh, good news for Jalen is if he, 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 June Jones, by the way, June Jones didn't think he needed to even change positions, James, from what you hear, because he said he'd be good at the quarterback position, but then he would have the leadership and the intangibles that when he got ready to go to the NFL, that he'd have the ability to change a position and make an NFL squad.